Hi there, I'm Peter Upvolt, and in this tutorial video I'm going to show you how to install Cacti, which is a monitoring and graphing tool, on a CentOS 6 system. Now Cacti is a fantastic tool for keeping track of what's going on on your servers. This is only a very basic install in this particular video we're going to do, but maybe more importantly, Cacti is a really useful platform that you can then extend, and you can add your own graphs and start monitoring all sorts of different pieces of information about the running of your server. So in this video, we're going to take a CentOS 6 system that already has Apache, PHP and MySQL installed and running on it. And we're going to install Cacti and get it to start collecting data. So let's get started. So on the assumption that your web server is up and running, as you can see here, my Cacti demo machine is uh, running Apache, it's also running PHP, and you can see the PHP info page here means I know PHP is working. And I know MySQL is working as well because I've just tested it a moment ago. So that's all ready, and what we need to do is install Cacti. But before we install Cacti, we need to install a few dependencies. So we're going to go across to the terminal on this particular machine, and I'm going to, uh, this is CentOS, so I'm going to use the yum package manager to install rrdtool. Now rrdtool actually draws the graphs from the collected data, and I'm also going to install some, uh, some software to do with net snmp. Now, snmp is the simple network management protocol, so I'm going to say yum install rrdtool, and then I'm also going to install net-snmp. And just for good measure, I'm not sure if I need it, I'm going to install php-snmp, which enables snmp support inside PHP. Right, so we'll go ahead and install those. Excellent, so that's installed. Right. Next thing, let's go and download Cacti and put it on the web server, in the web server directory, so that we can start playing with it. So I'm going to open a new tab and go to cacti.net. And I'm going to download the latest one, you can see here under latest files. And I'm just going to copy that link. And I'm going to go directly on the server. I'm actually already in the Cacti folder that I made. So if we just check where I am, I've made a folder inside the web server's root directory called Cacti, and we're going to install Cacti in here. Now on your real server, you'll probably want to install Cacti into a folder that isn't called Cacti, because you might not want people to find out about it and try guessing your password and so on. So I recommend you just name that something that nobody else is going to uh, pick up on and make sure that directory indexes aren't enabled so they can't find out where it is, just as an extra security measure. Not security by itself, of course, but, you know, it doesn't hurt just to keep it away from uh, from prying eyes. Okay, so I'm going to download uh, Cacti. I'm just going to use wget, and I'm going to paste in that link that I copied from the web page, and that's going to download the Cacti uh, software. So we've got Cacti, I'm going to extract it. You can do this graphically if you want, but I'm quite comfortable here in the command line, so I'm just going to use tar to extract that. And now what I've actually done is I've now got a folder called Cacti088a inside my folder called Cacti, so I'm going to move everything in that folder here. Um, and now if I see what's in this folder, you can see all the Cacti files are now here in this folder. What you might notice is that I've extracted this tar file and these files are actually owned by the user ID 1000, which on a Debian or Ubuntu system would be the first user account. Uh, here it's just turned into the UID 1000, so it would be a good idea to change the permissions on these files uh, so that they're owned by somebody. So I'm actually going to go up one, and we're going to change the owner of all of those files to my user account, Peter. If we go back into Cacti and list again, it's now owned by Peter. Now, if we go across to Cacti Demo slash Cacti, and I actually want to visit that site, Safari's trying to do a Google search all the time, um, we're going to get this message. What we haven't done yet is put in the database details so that Cacti can connect to its MySQL database um, for the web application to work. So we need to go back to the terminal again, and we're going to go into MySQL, 
Again, you may want to use phpMyAdmin to do this, but I'm very comfortable with the command line and uh, it's actually quite easy if you just follow uh, along. So we're going to log into MySQL using the root user. It's going to ask me for my password. So we need to create a new database for Cacti, and then we need to create a new user in the MySQL permissions system so that the Cacti web, web application can write to that database. So we're going to create a database called Cacti. I'm going to grant all permissions on that new database to a user called Cacti. It's going to be running on my local host, but if you have a database server on a different um, on a different machine, perhaps in a shared hosting uh, or similar kind of environment, it won't be localhost. And then identified by, and you're going to put the password in here. Now, I'm not going to use a good password. In the real world, you must use a better password than that, <laughs> quite obviously. Right, so we've created our user account and we've created our database. So we're going to quit out of MySQL and it's inviting us to put those details in include slash config.php so we'll do that so we're going to edit the file include config.php again use any text editor you want I'm just using the tools that, that I find easy to use and here we're going to be invited to input the user which I call cacti not cacti user and then the password that I set up earlier and again it's on localhost on this machine so when we save and quit that now before we go back to the web page we need to actually load the basic database in some uh, web applications have installers that do this for you unfortunately Cacti doesn't so if we try and visit the web page at the moment we're going to get a load of errors it's actually going to try and uh, it's going to try and allocate more memory than it's allowed to so that's not so good, uh, but it's quite easy. Uh, what we have to do is load in the database. So somewhere in here, there is a file. Here it is. It's called cacti.sql, and that contains the basic database um, that Cacti expects to be there when you run the web application. So we need to load this into the database we just created. So I'm going to run MySQL. Again, I'm going to use the user root and it's going to ask me for the password in a minute when I give it dash p. Uh, the database that we're going to import this file into is cacti and then I'm going to provide the file by redirecting cacti.sql into that command. So we'll press enter type in the password for mysql's root user and what that's done is it's taken the contents of cacti.sql and loaded it into the cacti database. So now when we access cacti demo slash cacti, we get the actual cacti installer and not an error. Okay, so we can run through this and see if we've got all the things we need. So we'll go ahead and click next after taking a look at that licensing notice. And this is a new install. Okay, so you can see it's found RRD tool, which we installed earlier. It's found PHP, obviously that's installed. There are a few pieces, a few bits and pieces here to do with SNMP that we should install before we move on. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to see what packages are available to do with SNMP. I'm going to do yum search SNMP. And what that is going to give us is a few packages. I think it will be net SNMP utils. So we'll do yum install net snmp utils. Yep, that wasn't installed, so it's going to go ahead and install that. There we go, that's installed. So let's go back to the installer, reload the page. We will send that form again. And this time it's found all of the uh, prerequisites for snmp support. So we're ready to go, we can click finish and that's actually gone ahead and installed Cacti. Now the default username and password the first time you log in is admin and admin and we'll be asked to change that immediately. So we'll go admin and then admin. I'm not going to save any passwords here. Right, And we've been forced to change our password for the first time. Again, pick a good password because this uh, this web interface gives a lot of information about your server. You don't want to be giving that out to everybody. You don't want people to be able to mess around with it. So uh, do do find a good password and, and have a good password management system. 
to uh, to manage all these passwords you need to take care of. So we're going to click save and we're logged into Cacti. Fantastic, good. But if we go across to the graphs view here, you will see none of the graphs are working. They're all broken images. So what we need to do is we need to configure a way for Cacti to periodically, every five minutes, collect the information and store it in the RRD files so that when we come to the web interface it can draw our pretty graphs because it's been collecting that data over time. So we're gonna, what we're going to look at next is setting it up so we have every five minutes the collection of this data. To collect this data we need to run one of the scripts in the Cacti folder periodically, so every five minutes in this case. If I just list the contents of this folder, it's called polder.php. Now there is another way to do this data collection called spine, which is a bit more robust, a bit better if you're collecting a huge quantity of data every five minutes um, because it's higher performance as well. We might look at that later, but for now polder.php is going to do uh, is going to do the job just fine. So we need to run this every five minutes, but we want to run it with a user account that doesn't have any more permissions than it needs to have. So I'm going to make a new user account called Cacti. Now we have made a MySQL user. What we don't have at the moment is an actual user account on the server, on the operating system itself. So I'm going to add that now. I'm going to say user add Cacti and I'm going to set a password for it. Now you don't really need to remember this password. In fact it would be great if this password was so difficult nobody could ever guess it because you're never going to actually need to use this password. We're just setting one so that it's not left wide open. Yeah, I know, bad password. Again, not I'm not doing password management properly here because this is a demo and I want to be able to remember the password, but you need to be doing password management properly and using strong passwords everywhere. So, uh, we have a Cacti user and what we're going to do is enable it so that the Cacti user is allowed to write to this folder here, RRA. The RRA folder contains, or will contain, it doesn't contain anything yet, but it contains the RRD files and that is all of those data points every five minutes that we're collecting uh, the data into. So we need to change the ownership of that folder um, and it's going to be owned by Cacti and the folder name is RRA. So when we list this folder again it's owned by Cacti now. Right, in fact you may have noticed in the background there this uh, web page actually reloaded. This web page reloads every five minutes as well so that you can keep it open in the background in a background tab and you can always check up on it to see how your server is doing. So that's quite a nice little feature. Obviously at the moment the graphs aren't working but you know something to remember. Right so let's get this collecting some data now. What we need to do is set up a cron job. Now cron is the scheduled tasks in many different Unix operating systems and we're going to use it to schedule that task to run every five minutes as I said. So I'm going to run crontab and now the user account is going to be cacti and I'm going to say dash e to edit. So this gives us a blank crontab. Now this is a little bit um, a little bit not very intuitive if you've never come to it before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in some headings at the top of this file so we can see what each one of the columns in this file is doing. So bear with me a moment. So what I've done is I've pasted in some headings here that show us what each line or each column of this crontab file actually does. Now, depending on the operating system that you've chosen, you might be in a text editor that you're not familiar with. Uh, this is Vim. And in Vim, if I want to actually start typing something, I've got to press I to go into insert mode, and you'll see insert here at the bottom. So I'm going to go into insert mode because we're going to type something in. So the first column here in the cron tab is which minute do you want this task to run at? Now I want it to run every five minutes. And we can put a star, and that will run every minute, but we only want to run every five minutes. So I can do star divided by five, and that runs once every five minutes. Now here we put the hour that we want it to run, so 0 to 23. But we want it to run every single hour, every 5 minutes. So, star in there. 
Same with the day of the month. We want it to run every day of the month, and every month of the year, and every day of the week. So those columns are entirely star except for minute, which we're going to say star divided by five, so only every five minutes. And the command we're going to run is when you want to run PHP, and that's the path to PHP if you remember back from the installer earlier. And then we want to run that polar file, which is in var www html cacti polar dot php. So I've written out this cron entry, and now I want to save it. Now to save it, I need to exit out of insert mode in Vim. So I'm going to press escape, and insert goes away at the bottom here. And now I'm going to issue the command write, and then quit. So I press colon W Q, and that's going to save and quit. And there we are. It says there was no cron tab. There was no table of cron entries for cacti. So it started with an empty one, and it's installed our new cron tab. So now I can do cron tab dash u cacti dash l to list it and you'll see exactly the same thing we just typed in uh, has come back to us so we know that's saved properly. So what should be happening now is every five minutes polar will be executed and that's going to collect the data points that we've asked cacti to collect and store them in that RRA folder in the RRD files. Before the polar is going to work, we also need to make sure that the log folder here is also writable by cacti. So I'm going to change the ownership to cacti on the log folder. And you see that's changed. And let's go inside the log folder and just make sure that the cacti.log file is also owned by cacti. So change ownership, cacti log slash cacti.log. I did actually have a few issues getting the RRD files to be created the first time. And how I fixed those was as root here, one time I'm just going to run php polar.php. And you might see that creating some directories and so on. Uh, so if you do have problems with the RRD files not being created uh, and you see nothing in RRA, if you just run php polar.php once, then that should clear that up. So, I ran that php polar.php, I've waited five minutes so that the polar actually picks it up, and back on graphs you'll see I actually have some graphs now. They don't have any data in them yet, but we have to wait for at least two data points to appear, so you've got to wait ten minutes uh, before we can see anything. So we've got some graphs, and next time we come back we should have some data starting to populate in those graphs as well. And now, five minutes later, we can start to see these graphs populating with data. So it's a tiny little portion, because we're looking over a whole day at the moment. Um, but you can see we've got data in all four of the graphs. And if I go across to last half hour, we can see it a lot more clearly. We can see that that data point between these two points in time has started populating with data. So now that this is running, it's going to collect data every five minutes. And over time, you'll be able to come back to Cacti and look and see what the system was doing you know, throughout its, th you know, all the time that it's switched on. So, Cacti is installed and running. So there's lots more that we can explore later. But for this video, we've installed Cacti, we've got it running and collecting data, so we can come back and we can see all of these different uh, pieces of information anytime we like. I hope this video was uh, helpful. I'm Peter Upvold, and thank you for watching.